Who's that sitting beside the you know, McDougal? I have the mic on. Mm -hmm. Good morning and welcome to the service from Emmanuel United Church. Greetings also to everyone who is joining with us on Zoom. Our sympathy today is extended to Meredith and John Taylor and their family upon the death of Meredith's mother, Millie McKim, on Wednesday, September 13th. A celebration of life will be on September 21st in Truro, Nova Scotia. Also, our sympathy is extended to Gloria Shin and her family upon the death of her husband, Alan, Thursday, September 14th. His funeral will, will be here this Friday, September 22nd at 2.30, and it will be here in Emmanuel Church and a reception will follow in our hall. The Pastoral Care Committee will meet on Wednesday, September 20th at 1.30 in the Fireside Room. Games Night, it will be back again on September 22nd at 7 p.m. You can play Yuku or Mexican Train. You can come along, you can bring a friend, you can bring many friends. Refreshments are available and the cost is $5 per person. There will be a youth worship service here at Emmanuel, Sunday, September 24th. Service at 9.30 and breakfast will be afterwards. Our regular service will be at 10.30. The congregation is asked to extend the invitation to as many youth as possible. If you're under 20 years of age, you're eligible. The men's club breakfast will be Saturday, September 30th at 8.30 a.m. here at the church. The men's club will lead our worship service on October 15th. And also join with us on Sunday, October 1st to celebrate World Communion Service. <coughs> also, October 1st, think summer and picnics. Well, prepare your fall uh, picnic outfit. Our summer potluck picnic has been uh, rescheduled to October 1st. It will take place here in the fellowship hall following the service. Everyone is invited for fun, fellowship, and food. And also music, trivia, and prizes. Our book holder friends are also welcome to share in lunch. Um, please bring yourself. If you're unable to bring any food, it's you we want most of all, and we will share everything that is brought. There's a sign-up sheet in the Narsex. The men's club is also preparing a visit to the Niagara Parks Power Museum, Saturday, October 28th. All Emmanuel members and friends are invited to join the adventure. There would be carpooling from Emmanuel about nine o'clock in the morning and lunch at Betty's restaurant. Uh, the group rates and if they apply, the cost would be approximately 28 to $35. More information will be coming and the men's club people would have more information. A sign up sheet in the Narthex. The very, very bizarre is coming back Saturday, November 18th from 10 a.m. to 1.30. The setup will be on November 17th. There are many opportunities for participation. For more information or to sign up, please contact Pam Byers and check the email that comes out the newsletter, the, the news updates on online because information is provided there. A great deal of information for you to follow. If you have done it before, you know what fun it is. It's work, but it's fun. And if you've never done it before, no matter what your skills, 
um, there's a place for you to be there and to help out. Um, if you need to sit, that can be arranged. Um, and there will be tea and coffee for workers and lots of friendship. And we hope people coming to share our church. Okay, financial update is available online. On September 30th, people across Canada celebrate on Shirt Day. This is to remember and honor the Indigenous children who were taken from their communities and families to reside in residential institutions. Is there anyone celebrating a birthday? No birthdays this week? Any anniversaries this week? Okay. And that, I think, is our announcements for now. And we focus our minds this morning as we reflect on the presence of the Holy One who is with us. Savior of the world, light of the world, we worship you. call to worship. Loving God, you sustain us when our world crumbles. You are there for us when other supports fall away. Even though we feel like giving up, even though the way ahead seems without hope, you, O oh God, are the rock that will not move. In the voices, more voices, sorry, we sing the hymn number one, Let Us Build a House.
Let us pray. O God, in whom we behold the image and likeness of ourselves, help us honestly to seek you. Deliver us from flippancy of tongue and fickleness of heart, that today's worship might prepare us for tomorrow's work. If today we are quick to endure you with gracious titles, make us equally quick tomorrow to honor you with gracious deeds. The litany. We were promised that the Holy Spirit will bring to us or bring to our remembrance all that Jesus said and did. When we gather for worship, we are warned against letting differences divide us. When we begin to attract the privileged, we are reminded not to neglect the poor when we promise to follow him. We are counseled to take up our cross. Amen. Ministry of Music.
Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verses 1b to 11. This will be done responsibly. I will read the odd numbered verses and you will respond with the even number of verses. Okay. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury. It consumed them like stubble. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? Our next reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 14, and I'll be reading verses 1 to 12. Okay. Or 4 to 12, sorry. Welcome those who were weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fail or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, Abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable 
to God. Our next reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's chapter 18, and I'll be reading verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times, Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave as he went out came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went out and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to the Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. May God bless to us these readings. Welcome to worship this morning, a beautiful fall Sunday morning. We are getting the fall weather and we are thankful. I want to welcome those who are worshiping with us. We have Zoom on via Zoom and if we have YouTube this later on today, those who will be sharing in the worship. Welcome to anyone who is new and is among us. We bless you, we welcome you, and we open our hearts to your service. Let us pray. May these words and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, 
you who are our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. I should have expressed thanks to those who organized the open mic on Friday night. Thanks to it's Friday night or Saturday? Friday night. Yes. Thanks to all those who participated. And I wish to record this so that even though Cindy and Jeff are not here, we can say thank you. Also, to remind you of the service tomorrow, to remind you of the service next Sunday at 9 a.m. for the youth. And so we are asking you if there is any young person who would show any interest, please send them. We are making an effort to revive the youth work in this church. After the service, there would be a breakfast in the hall with pancakes and bacon and so forth. And then we will have our regular service at 10.30 a.m. I want to address you this morning on Moses and the Israelites' song of praise to God in Exodus 15, 1 to 11. They had been in Egypt as slaves. And their cry and prayers for liberation from the oppressive Egyptians are now answered by God. God has sent all warning signs to Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And because they were stubborn and did not heed the call, God is now taking decisive action to set the oppressed free. So after the Passover, God led the the Israelites away from the Egyptians toward the land of safety. But the Egyptians pursued them. The Israelites came to what we call a cul-de-sac or a dead end as they faced the Red Sea with no dry land to cross. One could only imagine how the Israelites felt, believing that their effort to escape was all in vain. As they faced the sea as helpless children, they continued their cries, believing that this was the end. God said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea. And the sea parted so that the Israelites were able to cross over on dry land. However, when the, the Egyptians who were pursuing them tried to cross, their chariot wheels clogged and the waters return, and the entire army of Pharaoh died. The song before us gives praise to God as it spells out the attributes of God. God is powerful and mighty. God is strength to the weak. God controls the forces of nature. None is like God. And none will come close to God's majesty and power. The text is a reminder to all those who seek power and prestige by humiliating others to heed the message and warning signs 
that God puts before us. Even the signs reflected in nature. God is more powerful than any army that could ever be formed in earth or under the earth. The attitude to control and be in control by ignoring other people's feelings, needs, and sufferings is a dangerous one. And it is not only dangerous for the victims, but also for the perpetrators. For the perpetrators, it makes them feel that they are the judge and rewarder of everything. And what, once they are not the end it all, then they find ways to inflict harsher punishment. The perpetrators are always angry and dissatisfied as they will never be satisfied with the power and control they have. Perpetrators like Pharaoh, who do not listen and, always and are always resentful, angry, and greedy, need to keep the call and bear in mind that their power will come to an end one day. As Daniel puts it in his apocalyptic writing, their power is only for a time, half a time, or two time. To some perpetrators who love power, other voices do not matter, except their voice. Other feelings, except their feelings. Do you see now why Pharaoh did not listen or take heed to the message of Moses and the signs from God? It was always about what Pharaoh wants and how Pharaoh feels. So even after the Passover, he pursued the Israelites. Even after the disasters within the Passover, which were directed to him and the Israelites, he felt he should still be in charge. God has done all what is humanly possible to let Pharaoh know that enough was enough. But still, Pharaoh disregarded the signs. When a person likes power and control and refuses to listen, such a person becomes irrational, erratic, insensitive, callous, and angry. Thus, the warning signs mean nothing. This is why the evil ones like Pharaoh will destroy themselves because they ignore the chaos behind and the chaos before. This notion of control leads to hatred and resentment and it breeds division. So sometimes for peace to reign, the victim is called upon to be the one to forgive, the one to show that love is the answer, that our sufferings and pains may come as a sign of healing for all parties involved. That's why Jesus said, forgive 70 times 7. Leave vengeance to God. 
Do not repay evil for evil. Pray and wait on God as we open our eyes for the openings that God will create. Martin Luther was speaking to some emotional women who had had miscarriages. And in speaking to them, he used the text from Moses as an example in his 1542 letter, number 1542 letter. He said, even though you couldn't whisper, so great, sorry, even though Moses couldn't whisper, so great was his anxiety and trembling in the terrible troubles that beset him. His sighs and deep cry of his heart divided the Red Sea and dried it up. Wherever there is suffering and pain, oppression and worries, and we are willing to listen and obey God, act in forgiveness, pray and wait on God, look out, there will always be the parting of the sea before us. God will make a way when there seem to be no way. Let us pray. Last Sunday, I lit this candle in our prayers for the suffering people in our world. And we name those people who are suffering in Morocco because of that dreaded, dreaded earthquake. This Sunday, we do not only remember those in Morocco, but there are those who are suffering in Libya because of floods. And then right here in our backyard, yesterday, Hurricane Lee has hit hard a number of persons on the East Coast. This candle, we ask God to shine God's light on those who are in darkness. Even the oppressors, the leaders in our world who are causing so much suffering on others. And here I wish to Name the leader of Russia, North Korea, Israel, and even those who are hiding behind the scenes in corruption and causing pain and suffering on the poor and needy. The candle also brings before us and before God the hungry ones in our world People right in our communities or right among us 
who cannot meet their monthly commitments. Some are at the point where their basic needs are not met. There are children right in our communities who are going to school without a proper meal because their parents just can't afford. And they are adults after working hard all month when they look at their paycheck are worried. Can we pay our hydro? Can we buy food? Can we meet the rent or the mortgage? Many are on the severe strain. And we lift them up this moment. I'm happy to see Pam, Tom, and Rosemary in our midst this morning. Thank God for healing mercies. And remember you as we burn this light. Remember the members of the Shin family. As they prepare to celebrate Alan's life on Friday. And we pray for Meredith and John Hannah and Emily, as we believe they are on the road this moment, driving to meet their families. To celebrate the life of Meredith's mother, who is no more with us. We think of all of us, you and you and you and you. Because you may have a problem that we do not know of. Silently, you are bearing your pain. You're just afraid to share it. But it is causing great worry and concern. God who, crawled, who parted the Red Sea and led the suffering ones across. If there is a sea before us, and fear and trouble and pain loom within our hearts. Part our seas and lead us across. And may your blessing and your grace be upon us all now and forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. You alone art God. May your kingdom come and your will be done. 
heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us what we need each day, a day at a time, and forgive us as we forgive, as we forgive those who trust. Receive our offering. With a grateful heart, give thanks. To the Holy One, give thanks. Because it's given, Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks. Because it's given, Jesus Christ, His Son. And now, let the wind sing. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Let now, let the wind say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give These are our purposeful gifts, O oh God. They are given so that the faithful community may be strengthened. And glory will be given to your name. Amen. The song we are marching in the light of God. Marching in the light of God, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching, we are marching, we are marching in the light of God. Oh, 
Blessings from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with us always. Amen. Go now in peace. God bless you. Thank you.